Hey guys, welcome to NDTV. This is Spotlight. We have a power pack show this weekend. We have some Oscar winners on the show. We'll start with Steven Spielberg. We'll move on to Riz Ahmed, Meher Shera Ali, and then we'll get you an interview with Naomi Harris as well. So stay tuned. I start with Steven Spielberg. He's made West Side Story. I asked him if this is the West Side Story for the millennials. Listen to what Mr. Spielberg had to say. Hello, sir. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. And great to see you, Rachel and Ansel. Hello. Good to see you. Right, uh, Mr. Spielberg, to you first. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed your movie once again. Um, you know how much Indians love uh, song and dance. It's a part of most of our films. Um, any inspiration from here? Well, certainly the you know the, the the musical has been sustained more in India than any other country in recent decades. Uh, yeah. So Bollywood has continued to find value in musical expression through song and dancing. When right. the Hollywood musical has sort of gone away for a while, it comes back every once in a while with like right. Chicago, which was a great musical, and, and Les Mis came out. But it's not as consistent as the love the people in India have for the musical idiom. So we're very grateful for your right. hope. I hope our film performs well there because we too are a musical. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Uh, so is this the West Side Story for a new generation, for the, say, for the millennials? It, it, it is for, it, it, this is a West Side Story for a new generation. Uh, the, the, you know, we reimagined the original Broadway uh, musical from 1957, right. and we imagined it in the context of what's happening in society today. Mm -hmm. So right. in the context of that, it's much, it's very relevant. And, uh, and you see tremendous parallels between what's happening, certainly in our country today, and yeah. uh, um, between the Sharks and the Jets. Um, and, and all, but also the music still lives, it thrives. It is, for me, the greatest uh, uh, moving musical score ever written for a, wow. for a, a, a play, a, a, the, a theatrical play. And, um, and so that's the reason I wanted to make this as opposed to maybe perhaps doing an original musical. I wanted to bring this musical, this, these values, the, the issues, you know, to light again where this generation can, can, can identify with it. Right. Uh, Rachel, I'll come to you. You know, it's every actor's dream to work with Mr. Steven Spielberg. Uh, what is it that you would like to say that other actors are listening, that something that they should always remember when they're working with him? <laughs> I, wow. I mean, just embrace every second. Every word is is a prayer. Truly, it is so, so inspiring to work with Stephen because it's working with someone who truly cares about everything that goes into the projects he works on. And uh, there's attention to detail and there's also the invitation of collaboration, which is so important when making a film, especially a film like West Side Story, where so many of us were bringing our lived experiences that some other members of the cast probably couldn't relate to. And um, it opened so many important conversations and also just ask Stephen as many questions as you can about he's got the most interesting life so why wouldn't you want to hear about it <laughs> right right and so you know uh, when they're happy they are singing and dancing when they're sad they're singing and dancing what is a set a uh, normal day like on the set uh always very focused and excited uh had more more energy i think than almost any other set i've ever been on wow. uh yeah, the days that were, the days that, it, it's funny, I, I saw a, a member of the Sharks yesterday, um, and it was crazy to see his face because I remember being in the Rumble for six days straight where we shot, and mm. that scene was really intense, and the face that I saw last night was very different than the face I saw for six days straight. Um, yeah. So we definitely had some dark, challenging times together. Um, we had some happy times, um, and you're right, like this film kind of goes the full, the full spectrum of emotions from darkness to happiness uh and yeah i mean but at the same time every day was an absolute blessing and i look back at that rumble with a fond memory even though it was truly hell week mm -hmm. right right uh mrs Spielberg, theaters are opening worldwide you know again it's a it's a it's a bright day for filmmakers and exhibitors um uh, this is this is the, surely a big screen experience as well. Um, this is not a film that you could have shot in the lockdown, right? In where? During a lockdown. 
No, this would have been impossible to shoot during a lockdown. I, I, right. I just finished a film. I just finished shooting during the lockdown, meaning okay. we were all uh, COVID protocols. It's very, very difficult. We wouldn't have been as free to express our our lives through these characters, our love of, of, of these songs, if we had to be as restricted in our interaction with each other. So this right. needed to be a pre-pandemic or a post-pandemic production. And right. thank goodness we were able to finish it before that. Right. And so lastly, you know, uh, the cast is wonderful, extremely talented bunch of actors, all of them who were in the frame. What was that one criteria that everybody should have? That everybody should, should understand the culture of the other. That everybody should be able to understand who we are, not as actors, entertainers, as dancers and singers, but as human beings. And that's why I encourage the cast to get to know each other, to hang out together, to go learn about each other. We had we had experts come in who had lived in 1957 in San Juan Hill when the whole area of that part of New York was being torn down and who were fighting each other. And we had them t t talk to the cast. And Rita Moreno did an amazing job uh, yeah. telling the cast what it was like for her. She's from Puerto Rico, but yeah. she lived a New York experience, a real lived experience. And we invited people who had lived the experience to be able to share those experiences with our cast. And that wow. really helped to bond us. It really helped and it shows on the screen. Uh, thoroughly entertaining film. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Moving on to Rez Ahmad. He stars in Encounter, which is an alien invasion movie. I also asked him about Islamophobia in movies. Listen to what Rez had to say. Hi, Rez. Uh, good to see you. Uh, hope you're doing well. Good to see you too. Thanks a lot. Uh, Riz, thoroughly enjoyed your movie. Are you a fan of this genre, uh, Alien Invasion? You know, I would say that this is actually a film that's hard to fit into one genre because it's not really a science fiction film. You know, it has right. all the imagination and action of those kinds of films, but really at its heart, it's a family story. It's a father-son story, and it's a story about right now. You know, I, I was describing this to someone. It's not a sci-fi, but now-fi. You know, right. the themes right. in this film are about fear of each other, fear of infection. And that's something that we can relate to right now. So it's, like I said, it has a scale and a scope and the imagination of those kinds of films, but it's actually more urgent and more grounded than that. Right. Riz, you have a huge following in India as well. And, you know, this film is, like you said, now relatable. What all goes on your mind before green lighting a project? Um, well, with this project, I just really wanted to work with Michael Pierce in right. a big way. You know, yeah. I just thought... His last film, Beast, was incredible. Um, again, he walks that line between that genre-style mystery and a character portrait. And when I read this script and found out he was doing it next, I was just, I literally started stalking him. I was texting him, calling him, getting friends to call him, and just saying, I really, really want to do this story. And he said, look, you know, you're playing this American Marine returning from war. I, I always thought it would be a white guy playing this role. And I said, well, if you have a Muslim guy playing this role, that adds another layer this layer of oh. being the outsider in this society. Um, and it adds stakes in, in, you know, in the whole story. So right. he was very, very interested in that. And, and yeah, he started. Right. Riz, what is, a, what is that one thing that a Riz uh, fan should always know? Um, you know, if there is Islamophobia in a movie, I watch your tweets. Uh, will you, you know, is that something that will be of concern if there's racism in the movie? Uh, unless those are subjects of the movie. Uh, are those movies that you'll go ahead with? You know, when I came into this industry, I had a very clear idea about what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. And what mm -hmm. I want to do is do things that stretch culture, you know, stretch people's hearts and minds to the point of realizing that we're all the same. You know, there's so right. much us and them in this world. There's so much pointing the finger at the other. You see this in India right now. We have it in the UK. We have it in the US. We have it around the world. And I think stories have a really powerful role to play in reminding us that actually underneath our differences, we're all the mm -hmm. same. You know, people right. have different thoughts, different experiences, but they all have the same emotions. And that's the power of stories. So I want to do stories to remind us of what we have in common right. rather than separating us. Right. And where have we reached uh, as a society when it comes to getting completely rid of uh, racism, Islamophobia in movies? I mean, I'd love to ask you that question as well. Where do you think we're at with that in India? Uh, you know, we are somewhere in the middle. We have not gotten rid of it. I feel uh, that, but we should get rid of it is what I feel, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think so. I think we can all do better. You know, I yeah. think we can all do better. I think um, it's very, very easy, I think, for us to f all fall back on tribalism and finger pointing and demonizing people. But the only way that a story works, the only reason that a story works, and I can suddenly feel like, wow, I'm that character. I'm Salman Khan suddenly. You know, I'm Amir Khan in this film now. I'm Ritik Roshan. The only reason I can suddenly imagine that I'm those people is because, as I said, underneath the differences that separate us, we all draw from that same well of emotion. We're all the same. So if we weren't all the same, stories wouldn't work. Right, so there's, right. there's a proof right there. So I think right. we can do a lot better. And um, I think we all have a role to play, you know, all of us that, that work in the media and in holding ourselves to account to do better. Right. Riz, thank you for those lovely words and thoroughly enjoyed Encounter. All the very best. Thank you so much. Cheers. Time for a short break. On the other side, my interview with the team of Swan Song. Be right back. Welcome back to Spotlight. Now, first I get to my interview with Mehershala Ali. He's a two-time Oscar winner, stars in Swan Song. And after this interview, Naomi Harris will talk about Swan Song. She's the leading lady in it. Listen to both these talents right here on NDTV. Mehershala Ali, it's such a pleasure to be sitting here and chatting with you. Good to meet you. Pleasure. Uh, I watched your film and, you know, thoroughly entertaining. Um, you know, this character has a dilemma of sorts that one is that should he let the clone take over and the other one is where he thinks it's a bit spooky. Uh, uh, you know, could you tell me about the spooky side of it? Uh, what, what does he feel at that time when there's someone else completely in his house? Well, well I think it's more, it's more that he's just not clear if he can trust the situation. Um, and, and the fact that he can't incorporate his wife in the decision is also what's troubling for him. And so he, I think he just has so many questions about it, but the whole process is, is sort of encased in a lot of secrecy. Um, and so I think just the unknown, not knowing how any of this will really work and unfold, I think is what makes him deeply uncomfortable. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, you, you thought of producing this one is, uh, is it because it made complete business sense or was it your heart that said, I'm going to produce this? Oh, it, it would always start with my heart, you know, um, and I think in taking a part even, it doesn't, for me, it just, it never starts from the business end. It always starts from what, what is speaking to me, what is resonating with me. And then after you know what is, what feels right for you, then you work to get all the business stuff in place. Um, and, and make sure that it makes sense in terms of all that stuff, checking all those boxes. But, but this is a story that, that first grabbed me, grabbed my heart. And, um, and, you know, so the rest is history in the making, I guess. Right. And, you know, I heard a podcast where you said, you know, you were before deciding you spoke to your wife as well. What did she say about producing this one? Um, you know, it's, I, I more so shared it with her from the standpoint of really, really appreciating the story. And, you know, you, you go to your friends and family to get uh, a feedback. And so just in sharing it with her and, and the story really speaking to my heart, I, I pass it to a few people just from the standpoint of like, what do you think about this? I feel like this is a special story. And, and she definitely thought it was. Right. Does, it may, does this kind of story also worry you that what if this is our future? It's, it's definitely a possibility. It's not something that I'm, I'm going to lose sleep over in the moment. <laughs> but I think if anything, what's more important is for me, when I look at the story, it's what does the clone represent? And I think the clone represents, uh, represents the lead character Cameron's potential, who he could be. Who, and I think we all have a Jack. We all have a, a greater self in us that we need to make sure we're spending our time uh, uh, working to become our best selves because we don't necessarily know how long we have on this earth. And, and we're not aware when our number is going to be called per se. And so we want to make sure that we're present with our loved ones, that we take them in, that we don't take any of these moments for granted because um, we don't know how much time we have on this earth. 
Great. You were wonderful in the film. Thank you so much Thank for joining us. Thank you. Hi. Good to see you too. So you've done such interesting roles in your life. Um, uh, I watched this film. I wanted to ask you what you know. What was the first thing that you thought that I should do this film and I should take this up? It is a very interesting role. Oh my gosh, there's so many reasons why I wanted to do it. Um, I read it and I was really touched and really moved, and um, I just thought it was so beautiful and it had such a beautiful message. And and then also the other reason is that Mahershala asked me to be part of it, and I love Mahershala, and we we worked together very briefly on, on Moonlight. But I just thought he's such an incredible human being, and I really wanted the opportunity to work with him again. Uh, and then also I had like this Zoom call with uh, Ben, the director, and he is one of the world's nicest people. And he was just so, um, just so, I don't know, like inspiring. And I just knew that I'd be in safe hands with him because, you know, being a great director really is about having sensitivity and a gentleness of spirit. And he has that in spades. So I knew that I'd be safe in his hands. Right, and you know, um, when it comes to um, clones, uh, does does the idea of clones um, scare you, spook you, or it's fun? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I think it really spooks me, to be honest. But I think we're such a long way away from being able to clone people, and I don't even know whether that would ever be possible really because you know how do you replicate someone's soul i think physically you could replicate someone but i don't know if you could replicate their soul so um it does scare me but i think yeah there's a long way to go before we're able to do that <laughs> if you had a clone today for a day just for fun what you remain what would you make your clone do <laughs> these interviews <laughs> it would be sat in this chair and i'd be out somewhere in the sunshine <laughs> <laughs> right and you know it's it's, a, it's going to release online on apple tv um how is it different for an actor when you you know when it's a big screen release and when it's an online release um i mean it's it's not really different for me i think the difference is in the experience of the audience so you know what's wonderful about going to the cinema is you have this collective experience you know that you're you know you're with a bunch of strangers but you're all going on this emotional roller, co roller coaster together and there's something really special about that um but then there's also something really beautiful about being able to watch you know, moving within the comfort of your own home with your friends and your family or even on your own, you know, there's, that's a very special but very different kind of experience. Great. This was a lovely interview and you're lovely chatting with you. Just want to confirm this is you and not your clone, right? <laughs> yes, it's definitely me. My clone's out there somewhere, but <laughs> not today. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Well, that's all we could pack into this show. Hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed putting it together. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to NDTV for lots more.